and I'll post the recording in Canvas. So I just want to do our usual announcements. So if we look at our Canvas page, Again, I will post our YouTube link later this afternoon as soon as I can get everything converted. So you'll notice, for example, on Monday's link, it's a little bit different than it was before. You can either click on the link or you can just click on the video here. Again, I need to start utilizing YouTube. That way I can save data in Canvas, um, but it's all the same. It works exactly the same. So just either click on the link or click on the video. I'll do the same thing from here on out with any of our Zoom lectures. Then you do have some homework due in My Open Math. So homework section 6.3 on logarithmic functions are due Friday. So what I thought I would do today is just continue with logarithms, give you some um, helpful tips on the natural logarithm, log base 10, and then other logarithms and in doing so, I will introduce some properties that will help us solve equations, and we will look at some homework questions. So again, one more time, just before we get started, are there any other questions or concerns? Okay, one thing that was brought to my attention in some other classes is that occasionally um, the administration has set a passcode. So I sent out an email. If you do have any trouble ever getting onto Zoom, just use the passcode that I sent in your email. Or you can always email me and I can resend it to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and just continue our discussion with logs. And as usual, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to interrupt me and I'd be happy to clarify. So let's just do kind of a quick recap. So this is 6.3 logs. So recall that logs are inverses of exponentials. So what I mean by that is that they undo each other. So if you have a logarithmic function and you compose it with an exponential function, you are allowed to solve for your variable. So one of the things that be able to do here is to convert between the two. So let's just do a quick recap. So exponentials typically look like v to the y equals x. And then the inverse for logs would be log. And then remember, they share the same base b. But then you switch x and y. So it would look like this. And as a reminder, this really is a function. So I will take the logarithm and I will input its independent variable and get an output or its dependent variable. So think of this like f of x, but instead of calling this f, it's now the log function. So we had mentioned because they are inverses of one another, a couple of the properties or rules if I took log base b and then I compose it with the exponential, let's call it b to the x, those undo each other and I'm left with just my variable x. Similarly, I could do this in reverse, b raised to the log base b of x would also give me x. So this will come in handy when we are going to solve equations. But before we start solving equations, I do think it's worthwhile to make sure that we can, again, convert between the two. 
you'll notice on your homework assignments, the first, I think maybe four or five homework assignments ask you to go between exponentials and logarithms. So in this example, I'm just going to say to convert, and let's say into log functions, the following. So let's say that I give you the exponential function y equals, um, let's do seven to the x. And we looked at a couple of these examples on Monday, but let's practice a few more. So this is an exponential function. I can tell because the variable is in the exponent. So now what I will do is I will convert this into log and then they have to have the same base. So base seven of y equals x. So notice what I'm doing here, I'm picking the base, but then I flip X and Y. So let's try a few more. Um, let's say 16 equals um, nine to the X. So now I'm actually giving this an output. So if I do this log, and then I need a base. So maybe either using the chat or the microphone, can somebody tell me what the base should be for this log? Good, exactly, it should be nine. And then my input. So again, notice now I will input 16 and that will equal X. So towards the end of today's lecture, I will discuss how we can physically calculate this, either in your calculator or using a specific formula. But this is a way that you, again, are solving for your variable X. Let's perhaps do this in reverse. Let's convert into exponential functions. So let's say I give you a log, like log base two of y equals seven. So my goal is to rewrite it so that it looks more like this. So I know the base is two. So what should I put as the exponent, y or seven? Good, Nathan, excellent. So yeah, exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna use this as my base, but then I use the thing on the opposite as my exponent. And then I set that equal to y. And then of course, if you want to, you could simplify this further by actually calculating two to the seventh. For now, I'll go ahead and just leave it as it is because all I wanted to do is just write it as an exponential function. Let's try one more. Let's say I do log, let's say base B of 16 equals 10. So notice I left the base arbitrary. So I know my base is B. I will raise it to the 10 and that will equal 16. So any questions with how I'm converting between the two?
Again, the first maybe four or five homework questions asks you to do these types of conversions. So I just want to make sure that you're able to go back and forth. So in general, as a reminder, I think I have it on this board. If you have b to the y equals x, then the conversion is log base b of x equals y. So as long as you know that relationship, you should be able to go between the two. So before I move on to specific properties, I do think it's worth taking a moment to discuss two special types of logs. So we have log base 10. This one shows up all the time. Yep, thank you. Oh. So if you have log base 10 of x, oftentimes you will just drop the 10. So if you see log of x, it is implied that it's base 10. So for example, on your calculator, you'll see just an LOG button. That's log base 10. And again, this one comes up so often in all of the scientific fields that we just go ahead and drop that notation. So for those of you that might remember from high school, maybe you could type this into the chat or using your microphone. What is, maybe I'll do it this way. What is the LN of X? What base does it have? Yeah, it does, it has base E. And remember base E or the number E is just an irrational number. So this is what we call the natural logarithm. And again, it shows up so often in science that there's usually a button for it on your calculator and it's just LN. So these are two pretty important logs that you should know. And let's just look at a couple of examples. So there are, again, some homework questions on my open math that are similar. In fact, let me go ahead and just pull one up. I saw one just a moment ago that I thought would be worth doing. So if you give me a moment here. Couple conversions, conversions. So let's look at something like question 10. So again, your question 10 might be a little bit different, but the idea is to find the logarithm exactly of 10,000. So let me go ahead and do question 10 right here on my whiteboard. And we'll do this using our properties and what we know about our notation. So the first thing that you might be inclined to do is knowing this notation, we can write this as log base 10 of 10,000. Now, keep in mind the goal here is to get things to cancel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 10,000 as 10 raised to a power. So what exponent would I put on 10 to make 10,000? Good, Natasha said 10 to the fourth. So let's just verify that. You can do it in your calculator. Or the easiest way I have found to convert these is just to count the number of zeros. So if you just do this quickly, one, two, three, four zeros. So 10 to the fourth. Excellent. So the whole reason that I did that is because now we can use our compositions. So again, let me just flash back to our review. 
So if you look back here, the whole point of doing that is if I can match bases, so I had log base 10 of 10 to the fourth, as long as these bases are the same, I can cancel those and just write down the exponent. So in our example, we have log base 10 of 10 to the fourth, those undo each other and I'm left with just four. So let's try a few more. Let's do something like log of one over 1,000. So you'll notice this one is a little more challenging because now I have a fraction. Let's first convert this so it's log base 10. And then let's see what we can do with this fraction. So one thing that I could do is I could rewrite this. So using the trick that I just showed you, what exponent should go here? Excellent, three. Yeah, just count those zeros. One, two, three, 10 cubed. But I still have this fraction, so I can't just go canceling yet. Rather, I will rewrite this log base 10 of 10. So if I move this into the numerator, can somebody tell me what happens to the three? Yep, it becomes negative, exactly. So now I will just make the three negative. And again, we know that because anytime you move from denominator to numerator or vice versa, you negate the symbol. So it went from positive to negative. Now that they have the exact same base, I can undo those and end up with negative three. So now that we've played with log base 10, let's try the natural log. So if I do something like ln of e to the fourth, we know that technically that's log base e of e to the fourth. These have identical bases, they undo each other, and you're just left with four. We could try something like ln of, let's do one over e, to the T. So like before, I will convert this into log base E. And then let's do this all at once. I'm going to move the E to the T into the numerator. But when I move it, the exponent becomes negative. So in this example, notice everything just simplifies to minus t. <clears throat> so any questions with the natural log or log base 10? Sure, Nathan, no problem. So let's do the 10,000 one again. So we have log of 10,000. 
So the first thing that I did is knowing that there's no base here, it's assumed to be base 10. So, and then of 10,000. So the first thing I did is just recognize that these are equivalent. If it's not written, it's assumed to be 10. Knowing that, I am going to force 10,000 to have base 10. The whole point is to get these to have the same base. So I need to figure out what exponent I put on 10 to make 10,000. And the easiest way to do this, as Natasha helped us with, is to just count your zeros. So I have one, two, three, four zeros. So what I would suggest as maybe a side note, so side work. In your calculator, practice typing in 10 and then raised to the fourth. And it should, and then enter, of course. And you should end up with 10,000. So that's just my check. And then once, good, so once I've done that side work, then we know, because they have the exact same bases, that those will undo each other, and you're just left with four. And then for the fraction one, we did the same thing. I just moved the denominator into the numerator, and in doing so, I had to put a negative symbol on my exponent. Any other questions with these before I continue? Okay, so what I thought I would do next are some basic equations. So this is kind of like the next batch of problems on your homework assignment. And in fact, I think maybe what I will do is just pull a couple of questions directly from my open math and we'll solve equations. So this will involve using our compositions. So let's pull up an example from my open math. Let me just find one here. And we can look at several. So let's say that we want to solve, how about we do question number six? This one looks like a good one. So solve the equation log base nine of B equals negative three. So we'll look at a couple, but let's start here log base nine of B equals negative three. So we're solving for B. I want to know the input that would provide me this equation. So here is the trick. If I am trying to undo a logarithm, the only way to undo your logarithm and make that go away is to introduce the exponential and use your compositions. We know that if I can match bases, then everything will undo itself. So oftentimes what you will see is you'll see the following. Instead of rewriting the entire thing, I will just introduce base nine. But if I do it on the left-hand side, I have to do it on the right-hand side to keep the equation balanced. So it's similar to what we were doing before, but now instead of using the base inside, I'm doing it on the outside. So nine raised to the log base nine will undo themselves. And then you have B equals nine to the minus three. So as soon as I see a logarithm and I'm solving an equation, I just find its base and then use that base on both sides. 
now that I know that, we can simplify this. So let's turn this into a fraction by moving the nine into the denominator and making the three positive. And then nine cubed, you could just do that in your calculator, is 729. So one divided by 729. So this is kind of new. We haven't really done a lot of these. So are there any questions on what I did here? Yeah, so good question. Does it get canceled? Essentially. So because I introduced this base nine on the left-hand side, and then of course I had to do it on the right-hand side, these things undo each other. So remember, we had the property that said b log base b of x equals x. So those simply, quote unquote, cancel. That's not exactly what's happening, but that's how you can think of it. So we'll call it cancellation. And then you just take the input from the original log. So these canceled essentially, and then your input drops down. So let's try a couple more. Let's maybe change the position of our variable. So I'll call this part B, solve. Let's do, I'm just going to make one up like log. Um, Let's see, where was that variable? Let's say base b of 2 equals 15. So you'll notice the position of the variable has changed now. So this one will be a little bit more challenging, but the idea is the same. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce base B. So using the exact same idea, match the bases, then they will quote unquote cancel. So what I've done is I've converted this into an exponential function. So input comes down and then B, to the 15th. Now remember, when you have your variable as your base and then an exponent, the way that you can get rid of this is by taking what we would consider a root. So let me just maybe show you a slightly different example on the side here. Let's say I had two equals b squared. How would I get rid of the square? If I asked you to solve this for b, what would you do? Yeah, you would just essentially square root both sides, right? Where you're assuming that this is a little two. We don't write it, but that's what you're assuming. So the same thing will work here but instead of it being a square root, it'll be a 15th root. So you'd have two on the inside, and then you're taking technically a 15th root to undo this 15. Or recall another way that you could write this as two to the one over 15. So either one of these would be acceptable. So any questions with that problem? Okay, so just as a quick reminder, in the first problem, part A, we had our variable as the input. In part B, 
we had our variable as the base. So let's do one more where our variable will be an output. So solve, and let's just make something like log base four of 16 equals, let's call it X. So this one you should be able to do with some ease. And what I mean by that is let's just force 16 to have base four. So if I force 16 to have base four, what should be the exponent here? Let me state it another way. How do I turn four into 16? Yeah, good, I would square it. Four squared is 16. Now, the whole reason again for doing that is you have these same bases, they undo each other or cancel and you're left with two. So now we've seen three different examples where the variable has changed its position. So the first one, it was the input. The second one, it was a base. And in this third example, it was the output. <clears throat> okay, so we've seen some examples now where we've solved basic equations where we had logarithms. Let's try a couple of equations where we start with exponentials. So still solving equations, but I'm going to change the type of equation. So let's solve 10 to the x equals two. So I'm trying to solve for x. So again, with an exponential, the way that I will undo the exponential is using a logarithm. So I will take log base 10 of 10 to the x. And if I do it on the left-hand side, I must do the same thing on the right-hand side to keep the equation balanced. And again, you'll notice that I'm matching bases. That's the entire point of doing this. So log base 10, now that those match, those undo each other. So X equals log of two. And again, keep in mind, I dropped this notation because if it's 10, we assume that it's just the log. So I do think it's worth you guys practicing your calculators because you will need to either leave it in its exact form or perhaps approximate. So this would be exact, but if you plug it into your calculator, we could do log of two. So let me maybe do it this way. Maybe I'll just pull up the calculator. So let's just, do something like this. Log of two, and there is our approximation. So I'll round to, let's say the nearest thousandth, 0 0.301. So depending on the instructions, you may need to leave it exact which would be this top form where I did not plug it into a calculator, or it might ask you to approximate to some decimal place. Let's try a few more where we have the exponential out in front. So let's do, Part B, 
Let's do um, 16 plus 1. So maybe using the chat or the microphone, what base should I use for my logarithm? Yeah, good. So this was our base for the exponential, 16. So I'll use that for the logarithm, um, 16 to the x. And again, if I do it on the left-hand side, I must do it on the right-hand side. So then I end up with x equals log base 16 of 7. And at this point, with most of your older calculators, that's as far as you can go. I haven't taught you yet how to type this into your calculator. So most, let's just make a note here. Most calculators only have the LOG button, which we said was log base 10, or the LN button, which was log base E. So at this point, most of you would not be able to type this directly into your calculator because it doesn't have any arbitrary base. It only has these two. So that being said, let's talk about how we could convert this so that you can put it into your calculator. So there's something called the change of base formula. And we will write it down in general, and then we will come back to this example. So because of this problem that we're running into with our calculators, what we will do is we will change our base. So that we can make it look like either an LOG or an LN. So first of all, we need to make a few assumptions. The base B has to be positive and not equal to one. So you can't have a negative base and it can't equal one. So then for any base B, any base that you choose, you can rewrite this thing as the natural log of x. So take log base e of your input and divide it by the log base e or the natural log of your base. So this is something you'll definitely need to know. I put a star next to it. You'll work with this a lot. So let's go back to our example that we had. So in our example, we had log 16 base 7. So following this formula exactly, I would have the natural log of 7 divided by the natural log of our base 16. Now that you have that, you can plug these into your calculator. So the natural log of 7 is 1.94591. So again, I would make sure that you can verify these values in your calculator. And then the natural log of 16 is, oops, let's try that again, 2. 0.77259. Then just divide those values. Nine four five nine one, and you would end up with 
zero point seven zero one eight three nine. And then of course you could round accordingly. So if you want to leave it exact, this would have been acceptable up at the top. Just leave it alone. But if they ask you to estimate or approximate, then you will probably need to use the change of base formula. That way you can get the natural log on your calculator. And again, it's the natural log of the input divided by the natural log of the base. And then you can calculate those individually or do it all in one line and finally get your approximation. Are there any questions with the change of base formula? Okay, I would like to try a couple more solving equation problems, but I did think that was a good time to introduce the change of base. That way you have seen that in context of this problem here. So let's continue trying to solve a few more equations. And specifically, I want to focus on the natural log as we see how valuable it really is. So exponential growth we saw occurs all over in nature. It's in biology and forestry and chemistry and statistics. So let's focus a little bit more on this. So again, solving equations. Let's solve the following. Let's say I give you something like E to the five minus three X equals 10. So let's make this a little more challenging. So like before, this is an exponential function. That means to undo the exponential, I need to introduce a logarithm. So log base E and the shorthand is just to LN both sides. So what I'm really doing is I'm doing ln of e to the 5 minus 3x equals ln of 10. So this is kind of the shorthand that you'll see. But technically, this is the entire write out. And again, I'm doing this because LN is log base E. So I'm matching bases. So if I do this, what will I have on the left hand side? Can somebody maybe tell me or type it in the chat? We'll give you a hint. These are going to undo each other. Yeah, five minus three X, exactly. These have the same base, so they undo each other and the exponent comes down five minus three X. And then we'll just leave the right hand side as the LN of 10. Now remember, I'm trying to solve for X or my variable. So just solve it like you would any other algebra problem. Go ahead and I'll subtract the ln of 10 to the left and move 3x to the right. And then divide both sides by 3. 5 minus ln of 10 divided by 3. So this would be in its exact form. Then you could plug that into your calculator. So five minus ln of 10 divided by three, and I'll round to say the nearest thousandth, 0 0.899 would be its a approximation.
So again, I like these problems because E shows up all over the place. In fact, if you've taken any biology or chemistry or any STEM class, you, they have probably talked about this um, exponential growth. So it's important that you know how to solve these types of growth or decay equations. Okay, so there are several other properties that we are going to discuss, but I don't think we have enough time to really do that today. Um, so I think I'll hold off. Just one more time, are there any other questions about the material that we've covered so far? Okay, are there any other questions in general that I can help you with? Okay, so if not, have a good rest of your afternoon and I'll get this recording posted as soon as possible. And don't forget that your homework is due on Friday. Have a good rest of your morning. Thank you. Thank you.